Hey guys, it's Ellen here, and we're doing some fun, easy watercolor Christmas cards. This time, snowflakes. I had one a while ago that I did for a tutorial, but I'm doing an updated version here, and just going over about painting, you know, thin lines and freehand and not freehand. Um, doing this whole technique where you're splattering and paint to create this really mystical kind of look. And then showing you how when you use a skinny brush, you can create some nice, fun little patterns with watercolor. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Also, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and check out my Patreon. I have ad-free videos, traceables, and a uh, live stream on the top tier. I actually have my live stream tomorrow. Oh, I'll talk about that. Anyway, uh, it's a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. And you can check it out in a second right up here. Boop, it comes up here. Um, so without further ado, we're going to grab our blue paints, a skinny brush and a big brush, a little bit of white gouache, and go to town making some snowflakes. Okay guys, to start with, let's just go over some supplies. I'm just going to be using two colors for the watercolor. I have my um, ultramarine blue and I have my Prussian blue. And then we're going to be using some white gouache, which I have down in the corner, you know, just three simple things to do. Um, I'm using a couple of different papers. I use these ones I created here, just to show, show you some samples. I created on this Strathmore paper. Um, I think I have a link here. It's, I was gifted this paper, um, and it's you know this is 100% cotton. It's, it just doesn't have a tooth like the like the Arch does, and it's not as expensive as the Arch is obviously. And you know so it's not going to be the same kind of paper. I do have um, an Arch paper I'll be playing with also. Now you see this is a little bit more cream color than this. It's a little more bright white. So you might want the bright white for the card. I did play with some Arch with this particular um, snowflake. And you know, we can play around. Like this is a good exercise to do with your scraps. I mean, these this piece was a scrap. You can make a nice little tiny card, right? you have fun it's like you know it's therapy it's just getting out of your comfort zone it's playing and it's only two colors and some gouache and um you know it's for a super beginner who wants to just play with watercolor you know has never tried it this is a perfect exercise and something fun to do and creative for the holidays and any age level i'm telling you, even five-year-olds could do this right um so for snowflakes, you know, all over the internet, you can download snowflakes. You can look at them online. Uh, obviously, there's some real intricate ones you couldn't draw. These ones are much simpler to draw, and I'm going to show you how simple. And then they get a little more, d you know, detailed. But think of it as a doodle, you know, just something mindless you can do when you're drawing. Um, you know, I always say this is simple. You can just sit there and draw this. And you can just, when you get the, as we go with the watercolor, you can draw this and then put the paint down if you wanted to or you can just go for it like I do painting it so you know simplest snowflake a line down across right like a cross like a plus sign and you go in between that's already a snowflake and then you can add little dots on the ends a more intricate snowflake get more detailed add these little like a V right in between that line Simple V gets more intricate. Well, that's that kind of crap. You want to go right in the middle. <laughs> and then you can add another V. You see, it starts to get more intricate. And another V. You see? And you could add a circle. Look how detailed that got. Real fast, right? Simple and detailed. That's how I do them. You know, you can get crazy you can start off uh, you can start off with the circle go line up line down then you want to do one kind of like quarter way there and a quarter way here and then you can do a triangle or I'm sorry a diamond coming out of the circle on each little corner here Look at that. Put a dot in the middle. You're getting super intricate now, right? Then you do that V thing again. Right? And you do it again. 
mindless doodles and little dots in the ends and you want to get more intricate you can add a little line from each diamond and put a dot on each end of that so everything's like a build upon a build upon a build upon a build upon and the bigger you make this the more intricate stuff you can add in the details you can add little dots inside the diamonds so super simple doodles as i would call them and then you just get a little crazier as you go you know again you can go simple again line down instead of going crisscross diagonal again right and then you can make the kind of like a diamond in between again mine's a little off but who cares if it's off and you make those little v's you just keep playing and you can add the dots or you could add something else like another triangle you know more lines coming out here this is just ideas you can just go on the internet and you can find a ton of them like i did here just to reference you know this you could totally draw it's just lines and lines and lines same thing with this one um, this is similar to what we did before so these are a little more intricate i don't think i'll paint these you know i painted really simple ones really simple ones the key was to do this watercolor with a little gouache splattering it's kind of like that bokeh look without having to remove paint you're adding paint it has that like mysterious mysterious mystical kind of look so I just took this Strathmore pad paper. It was an eight by 10. I folded it in half and then I folded it in half again. So then I got this nice little size for a card. And see, I folded it in half and then opened it up and I'm putting tape on the upper part. So this part is the, the card front and this is the back, just holding it down. And so if I go to splatter, I'm not gonna splatter all this. And this is where it gets real simple, right? Well, I don't know about real simple, but kind of simple. When this one, I did the dark color and had it bleed down a little bit. And of course, because it's not um, and like an arch paper, it's gonna have that real hard edge, you know, so I got a nice bleed. And this one, I just kind of did all the deep bleed around. So we're gonna play around with both of these. So I'm gonna use my number, I didn't go for brushes, but I'll be using the number 10 brush and the Princeton number four Velvet Touch Series um, long round for the snowflakes. And this little guy, just whatever mop brush you got, like a small, just like a 10 size, because this is, this paper is probably, let me see, like a four by six or something like that. So I'm gonna grab some ultramarine blue, which is a nice pretty blue. And I have my Prussian blue mix. I like to combine them. You know, if you wanna test out, always talk about scraps, test out the colors before you paint. You don't like that blue because you can't, you're painting on the paper. You don't like it. It's kind of like, sorry, sorry, Charlie, you already did it. <laughs> so it's always good to test it out. I could add a little um, mutual tint to make it little, if you want a navy looking, like deeper color. I like the bright blue though with the, with the ultramarine. So I mix up those colors. You want a good amount to mix up here. I'm mixing the two, Prussian and ultramarine. It's like this deep blue. I'm going to go for it. I'll clean up my brush. So I'm gonna get, I'm just turning this up. Oh, I taped it on a piece of thick cardboard. I'm sorry guys, I'm not going through all my stuff, but I'm just gonna wash with some water, like you saw in the thing, yeah, my first card there. I could wash the whole area, but I'm just gonna wash basically the inside of it. We'll leave a little edge. You don't have to leave an edge. You can go all the way to the edge, but I am going to, and this one is soaking up. Wow. So I'm turning on the side so you can see the sheen a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna grab this paint and see how it bleeds. Might wanna add a little more water. This paper is a little different. See, I'm gonna add more color. It's not cooperating, right? When it doesn't cooperate, there's another tool I have that makes it cooperate, tells it who's boss. <laughs> the spray bottle. Bleed! <laughs> Don't you love my sound effects? Bleed! Now, look at, 
it looks kind of creepy. You can take your brush, clean it off, and kind of push it around. Say, oh, who's boss? I want you to bleed down. And I also have my paper towel here, guys. It must be a crazy week because I'm not remembering anything to tell you. But everything's always in the description box. So now, see, it's not bleeding like I want to. I'm going to go up and down, up and down, and tap it on the paper towel, remove some of the excess. Up and down. Because this paper is not like Arsh. I'm doing the cheap paper first. And then I pushed around some color down here. Up, oh, see, when I sprayed, it got a little spray up here. So if you really don't want to see any of that, you want to put tape against here. I didn't even realize that. Wow, it splattered it on the front top. Didn't splatter on the bottom. So I'm going to go and add some more paint. Because again, like I said, we're working with the cheap paper here. The cheap guy. I'm going to push this paint around. Now if you want color down here, just go ahead and put some color down there. I'm just going to play around, guys. This is just supposed to be fun. Put some color around. I'm going to add some more deeper color. Up here, I'm getting really deep. Going in the deep. I'm not Adele, so I can't sing. Uh, yeah. And one good thing we have to do about this is that we must let it dry. One thing of note, when I tell you I let things dry, sometimes I let things dry naturally and they take time. Well, obviously for tutorial purposes, I'm not going to have you sit there and watch this thing dry within minutes or, you know, half an hour. So I'm just taking some paint off here. Moving around. Okay. So it's a cheap paper. You can see the quality is not going to be as fabulous as the nicer paper. It's just the way it goes. So we're kind of letting this soak in to the paper. It's still very damp. I'm going to clean off. I'm still going to use my number 10 brush. I have some white gouache here. Now gouache is water soluble and it has like a chalk in it. So it has a different binder. So it kind of repels if it's thicker. You know, I, I've shown some tutorials where I use acrylic um, ink and does that. It's kind of like oil and water don't mix, you know, kind of scenario. So it has a different binding agent in it that even though it's water soluble, it's kind of like it's got some chalk in it so that when you go to splatter on this, it's kind of repel a little bit. So I put some on my brush. I didn't get it super wet and loose. See how it's still kind of damp? I'm adding a little more paint here. Let's see. This is always a trial and error. And I just see what happens. I got little dots. The more water, it's going to be bigger dots. And see how it's spreading out? It does this beautiful magical thing where it just it kind of repels in the watercolor and spreads. One of my very popular YouTube videos with the um, snowy winter scene with the tree with a little bird. I did this technique, and if you look up close, nothing with the spray bottle. See how it sprayed all that paint out there? Don't do that. Don't follow me. <laughs> but you see how it's repelling, but it's making that like really mystical, beautiful, um, kind of like a bokeh look, but uh, without removing the paint or using masking fluid. It gives it that same kind of look. And then you can go back in, which I will show you, and you put little dots and it creates like a nice luminous kind of like, like it's snowing. So we're going to wet, I'm going to let this dry and not in real time because in real time we would be sitting here talking and having a long chat. I'm kind of watching this dry. And by the way, if it starts to curl, people ask me, how do I fix the curled paper? There's two things you can do. You can take an iron to it, flip it over, put it on like a hard, you know, table or something and iron it. Put something protective on the bottom of it. Like, you know, that's not going to get paint on it. But you don't want to use a steam iron, just a hot iron, and that can make it flat. That will work. Instead of putting it in books or something like that, the heat. The heat will make it flat. Now see, it's it's really kind of, if you want a little bit more whiter without bleeding as much, go back in again as it's drying again, adding the gouache with little paint, I mean little water, splatter, and then we'll be more concentrated. Look how fun that is. Again, you might want to taped off this whole section so you don't make 
this side kind of messy, but who cares? You know, nobody's going to care. It's all about the fun. So I'm going to let this dry and come back and not in real time. <laughs> okay, guys. So like magic in the world of television, <laughs> it's dry. Sometimes I cheat and I use a hairdryer. Um, you know, if you're really in a hurry, sometimes you just let it, I mean, like I said, this is not the expensive paper. So if I was doing something really nice in Irish paper, I would let it dry naturally and come back. Um, if you want to rush and you got some cards to do, you could use a hairdryer and cheat. Just do it slowly. Okay. Don't like slam with the heat, you know, um, I got my number four brush to paint my snowflakes. Like I said, um, if you're really afraid to go full on painting the snowflake right away with the brush, you can go right in and just take a little, I have a two H pencil and plan out where you want your snowflakes. I kind of like, I started off doing this card where I've kind of put them all over and then I put some blue ones down here. But then I think I like this one better. Um, and I just did a few of them. I think this was nice. I mean, that's nice. And this was nicer. So I planned on doing a big one here. See, so you might want to map it out with your pencil. Um, that way you don't mess it up, right? And then you can do it again over here, like I did one over here. So just mapping it out helps you, you know. I didn't map those ones out, I just kind of went for it. But then again, I've been painting for a long time, guys. I'm used to it. And even this little snowflake is kind of messy and I don't care. It just looks cute. So map it out. Grab your number four brush. And now we're going to use the gouache again. Now, you want it loose enough to use to paint and that's super loose. I'm going to fix my paper towel here. It's all blue. Grab a new one. Like they do in the t TV land. Um, if it's super loose and wet, then it's going to be kind of transparent. It's not going to be opaque, but you kind of want that too. So this one has that look where it's the paint was more water to it. So it's more translucent and this one's not. So do the different variations, especially where this part is very light blue. You might want it more trans uh, opaque, but you can always go back over it. So I'm going to just go down, you know, like I said in the drawing, and you just add those lines. It just makes your life easier. I could do a bunch of these at the same time because I drew the pencil lines. I didn't do the pencil lines on the other one. Like I said, I went for it. So three, three big ones. You might want to do my, bigger than what I'm doing and then a bunch of small ones. So I did those lines down and the cross like I showed you before. And then I could just do another line in here in between all that. Very simple. Look, it looks pretty just like that. Let me zoom in so you can see better. So I did the lines and then the diagonal right there. And then you just do those V's, right? Now, if you have to turn your paper, turn your paper. You know, I'm kind of used to it, so I don't have to turn my paper, but if you need to turn to do each V in between the lines, turn it. It's because I'm not doing it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. And I'm doing it. I'm not doing it because, you know, I'm trying to teach you how to paint. So you get the little brush, you're doing those little Vs. And then I have one in the bottom one here. This is great therapy. If you're stressed out, you know what? I just need 20 minutes of my own time to relax. This is it. Put on some nice music. Stop painting your little V's. And then, you know, at the end of the V's, I just put like a little dot. See? Dot, dot. You can get fancier. I showed you how to draw a fancy. You just build and build and build. And you can do the same thing painting it. Now, if you want to cheat and don't want to paint because um, you want to cheat, you can use a gel pen. But I suggest painting with your brush. Do you know why? Because then you're going to get used to painting detailed things when you're doing watercolor. So now I can turn it. All right? I had this one. I think I had. Oh, I did a fancy one on that one. I didn't do one here. I'm talking to myself. Sorry, guys. Put a little circle here. And I'll do the bigger, fatter V's. Just like that. 
So yeah, using the brush, and I could just do like a little line here. I'm just gonna change mine up a little bit from the other ones. And add a little dot, bigger dot right in the middle. Um, it will get used to painting little line strokes with the brushes. This is a great exercise for learning how to paint tiny. You know, if you, you're doodling with your brush as opposed to a pen. It's kind of easy to draw with the pen. It's a little more difficult to do with the brush. So this one I had just a bunch of V's. I call them V's because they cost, they kind of look like, right? You see, and some strokes you'll notice like you did better in some ways and you notice. And also it helps with the consistency of like the paint you know, getting the right water, con you know, control down. And especially if you're just learning how to paint, use gouache. Now see how I remember all these little white spots that splatter that are now pale blue? You put like a little white dot right in the middle of them. And it just looks like they're sparkling in the sky. Right? It's kind of cool. It's like the, the cheap way of doing boca. Boca and boca, I don't know if that's a correct word, a correct term, but doesn't that look great? Like luminescence with like the dot in the middle. Isn't that pretty? And then you just go and add kind of whatever crazy snowflake. So I can start with the circle, which I didn't do. When I see my paint starting to dry, I'm gonna have to add water. These are the things I want you to get used to doing. And this is a good exercise. It may seem like, oh, this is a juvenile looking tutorial. Well, it does help with dexterity and learning how to use the brush in so many ways. So from here, let's just wing it. Let's put the little lines out here and the diagonal here and here. And then let's do something fun. Let's see if we can do a triangle. See, I noticed that my paint was a little too thick but I don't give up and neither should you. I'll extend that line now and I'll do my little V's. So it's not as super intricate. I'll put a little dot in the middle. Put some dots. I think the dots really help. <laughs> so if you're messing up, you've got dots to like fix it for you. You see? So there was like about four big ones. And then you just go in, you can add some smaller ones. Now this one was a this one was a little bit darker than this one. And these just make these simple snowflakes, you know, the crisscross applesauce. Just like that. And I put a little dots on the end. Really simple. Crisscross applesauce, that's what I'll say. It's just very therapeutic though to do something. Now you can take actual gouache and just put in some snowflakes, just dots. And we, we did some splattering ones. Now you can do conscious where you want some. You can put them in like a bunch down here. I kind of like how it's very light right down here. You could write the words peace down here, joy, hope. Goodbye, COVID. <laughs> I'm trying to make light of the situation. I know it's just horrible. And I'm sorry if anybody here has lost anybody. I want you guys to enjoy life. And this is what you need to do. Painting snowflakes. I'm serious. It's very therapeutic. I probably could paint a million of them. And I could draw a million of them. But, you know, I've been drawing for a long time. So, look, how long did that take? Really? Two seconds? I don't know. My, my lighting I might be a little bit off. So, to show you, see that's very light in here and you can't see much of the snowflakes. You'd see more here. Maybe I would have done a bigger one here. So I can show you with those two colors that we mixed before the to make the sky, whoops, we could use to make the blue snowflakes here. Only you're gonna lighten up the color, right? So you're gonna add more water. See all that water I'm adding? Again, test it on the paper towel. Take it off, let's see. I always tap it on the paper towel if I have excess water. People ask me that all the time. So, same thing. You could put the little 
blue snowflake. See, crisscross applesauce. Add all those little lines, dots, and then you have a color combination of different snowflakes. That's if you wanted to do the blue. You don't have to add the blue. I think it's a nice balance between the two. And you can make them more intricate if you want. And if you don't want it so light in tone, you can make it darker. Um, I'm going to show you a little technique. So when that dries and it's nice and light, you take the darker tone of the blues with hardly any water, go back in there, and you can add some. See, I'm adding some darker tones. Now mine's a little bit wet still, so it's bleeding, but look how cool that came out, right? I just touched little dots on the lines. See that? And that one bled right in there. <laughs> Happy accidents, guys. I love them. You need to play. So this tutorial is just about play. Um, you know, and it's not so serious. Some people claim that my tutorials can be hard and other people claim that they're not hard enough. I can't please everybody. I can just do me. So again, I'm adding the blue here, crisscross applesauce. And then while it's still damp, you take that darker, what I mean by darker, just hardly any water on that paint. And you just bleed a dot in there. Like ultramarine or depression, whatever. Just bleed some little dots on those little lines. Look how cool that came out. Right? And this one's really kind of cool because like you see the dots, but you don't see the rest of it. Very mysterious. And that's how you do that. So this is just a quick, simple, fun tutorial. And again, I'll do a couple more here just to show you. This one's a little more concentrated color. Right. Can hear my stomach growling. <laughs> I hope you guys can't. Hilarious. Am I gonna edit that out? Nope. I'm just gonna be me. I'm gonna add some blue dots to this one. That's the so I ended up I wanted to do this one. <laughs> which I didn't do. But I ended up doing one like this which is fine. Kind of a combination of the two because this one's lighter. But you see how you can do that? Now, if you made it darker in the corner here, you just go ahead and make the snowflakes. Very simple, right? And then just fold this in half and you have a cute card. Give it to a loved one or a friend. Oops, sorry. Isn't that fun? Really simple, guys. This is just watercolor one-on-one. And may seem like a joke and simple to people, but the more you get used to taking your watercolor brush and painting tiny little intricate uh, snowflakes or details, the better you'll get. So let me just grab a little scrappy, scrappy. So I grab that, the watercolor itself, right? And you're gonna do the lines. By the way, this is another trick for you. See how I hold my pinky like this? Hold pencil like a drawing, like a drawing, like a writing. But see how my pinky? It kind of rests like this. This helps keep the paintbrush up in a good position and more control of your brush. I'm resting that pinky down and holding it up over the paper. You see that? See? And you do the little lines across. And across again. Now, looks juvenile. Anybody can do that. Well, let's get busy making it different, right? So then we add the diamond. Get used to using your brush. Turning the paper now to make it easier. The diamond. Oops. Now I'm doing this freehand. So my snowflake might be a little goofy. 
in some areas. Now, if it looks like, oh, the diamonds were horrible because they, were, they weren't, you know, even, then you, this is where you can fix your mistake. You can just fill that color in. Didn't think you could do that, did you? Yep, you can just fill it in. And then you can kind of fix it, make it bigger or smaller. Well, I'm sorry, you can't make it smaller, you can make it bigger. So look at that. And then you could add those little V's, as I call them. Now, I'm not holding my pinky down this time. I'm up just up in the air. But I do use my pinky a lot to help guide my hand. I keep it up. If it's excess water, you tap it, lift it up like a mop, and tap it on the paper towel. Again, do another V. So you can make a really pretty watercolor snowflake. You don't even need to do what I just did with the gouache. So now I've got a nice pretty watercolor snowflake, right? It's still a little damp. You can take the paint that's concentrated, which is minimal water here. Teeny bit of water while that's still damp. Watch that fun happen. <laughs> See? Tap it in the air. Now these berries might be dry, but if they're still wet, they can bleed and create a really cool looking snowflake just by bleeding the color. And then you could do little taps on the diamonds. And you can do the little round balls in the end. Look how pretty that is. Like I said, you get really detailed with this brush. This is just going to help you learn to paint details. And then get little balls here. I mean, for days you can add patterns. Um, I'm pretty new. In my other, what I do normally, licensing, um, I do a lot of patterns. And I've created some, um, a lot of fabrics and stuff like that. So I love to make patterns. It's kind of my go-to thing. And it's it's um, very therapeutic, and if you hear that noise, I'm sorry, it's trash or whatever they're doing. <laughs> so look at that. And you can go and just keep adding and having fun. Get even darker with that paint. Right. Grab the Prussian blue because it's even darker. Right in the middle. And look at that pretty snowflake. And by the way, guys, you don't have to make it in blue. You know that? You can make multi colors. So, and then you could write. See, that's another thing. Getting used to using this pen, excuse me, paintbrush. <laughs> and then writing like a pen. I'm sorry. So, words, joy, a sweeping motion. Down, push down, lift up the J. Push, lift up, O. Oh. Curl, push down, lift up, push down, lift up. Joy. Put a little dot. Add some color. Getting used to using the little brush. I don't really use a lot of the little brush a lot of the times because I like to do loose tutorials, but I do use them for details. So there you go. Joy. I hope this was joyous. I hope you learned something. If not, no big deal. <laughs> I'm just here to do me. And you guys, I want you to enjoy life. I want you to just paint some snowflakes. You know, get out of your head, enjoy life, and have a little fun. So if you have any questions uh, about any of this, leave them in the comment section. I'll try to answer them. I can't always answer them. I'm kind of busy. But um, I do my best. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you haven't, hit the bell notification button. I suggest you do so because then that way you know my tutorial is up. I am never on time with my tutorials because my life is crazy. <laughs> One day, hmm, maybe I get an assistant and I'll have it on time. But we'll know. Anyway, thanks guys for stopping by and take care and I'll speak to you soon.